Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. 16 candidates for president just in the Republican party, but are any of them truly conservative? We're gonna ask Phyllis Schlafly, leader of Eagle Forum, also get her take on the Supreme Court rulings. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to report the news and discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. But today we have a special guest, live via Skype from her home office, is Phyllis Schlafly. Welcome, Phyllis, to the program. Thank you, very good to be with you. I would say you're a woman who needs no introduction, but uh, let me just brag about you a little bit. You have been a conservative leader in the movement for decades. I mean, you worked directly with President Ronald Reagan. Uh, you were, I think, a Goldwater girl. Is that how you started out? Tell us, yes, for those in right. our viewers who don't know you, how did you get started? Well, I really got started with the convention that nominated Barry Goldwater. And I was part of the group that wanted him <laughs> and not the establishment pick, because I think the establishment always picks a series of, of losers. So I wrote a little paperback book called A Choice Not an Echo, and I told the shenanigans that the kingmakers had gone through at convention after convention. And uh, I started out uh, printing 30, 30, 25,000, uh, taking a plunge, and I ended up selling three million. And it really uh, invented the, the uh, conservative movement in this country, and people were very excited about Goldwater. Of course, the establishment beat him, but we got our reward a few years later when we nominated elected Ronald Reagan. And I think we would not have had Ronald Reagan without inventing the conservative movement for Barry Goldwater. Well, thank you for your historic participation in growing that movement. Talk about today's presidential race. 16 Republican candidates for president. I'm not asking you to endorse any of them, but are any of them conservative? Well, sure, but it's up to the voters to go out and ask them questions, good questions, and make them commit themselves. Uh, those 16, as they're traveling around the country, uh, make them answer the tough questions about immigration, about uh, the what they're going to do about Iran and the atom bomb, uh, what they're going to do about uh, Obama and his uh, his uh, uh, refusal to obey the law, and uh, so then you'll find out who's a real conservative. You know, Donald Trump has made headlines talking about immigration. I think he's winning votes on that issue but he's also an advocate for single payer health care. Do you think Donald Trump can be, I know he's a populist, but is he conservative on, on many other issues? Uh, well, I don't think anybody's perfect, at least uh, since Ronald Reagan, nobody else is perfect around. And <laughs> we're not gonna have a resurrection of Ronald Reagan. But uh, I, I think uh, uh, Trump has performed a great function in uh, stirring the people up in getting them interested in the election next year, which may be the most important election of our lifetime. And uh, so I encourage him to speak out. Are there any candidates that you do not like that you wanna criticize or even not support? Well, I urge you to get my new edition of A Choice Not an Echo, uh, which tells you the shenanigans that the, uh, that the big establishment engaged in since 1964. I've got a chapter on each convention and you'll find them very interesting, such as the 1980 convention when Reagan was nominated and uh, the big donors, the big people, thought they were gonna set up uh, like a South American coup and have a deal whereby Henry Kissinger would be running through manipulating uh, Gerald Ford. And uh, there are a lot of good stories in this book that you need to know so you're prepared for what they're doing this year. 
And uh, so I urge you to get a choice on an echo and, and be prepared. Uh, we, we need to have people, the grassroots, uh, participating in the process. Well, many of the candidates that I would consider establishment have really taken positions against the conservative cause. Just a couple examples. Jeb Bush is a strong advocate for common core education standards. Chris Christie uh, signed a law to ban conversion therapy. You know, Christian therapists cannot talk to homosexuals. Uh, are these the kinds of issues that you would like the voters to ask candidates about? Yes, and I think Common Core is a tremendous issue at the grassroots. And I noted that uh, uh, that uh, Jeb Bush is really dug in in support of Common Core, and he made a funny statement. He said he wasn't going to change because he has backbone, but that's backbone with the wrong policy. So that's not what we want. We want parents to be in the driver's seat for controlling what their kids are being taught and not taught. That's terribly important. And we also need to address the immigration movement that uh, Trump has been talking about uh, and the crimes that are committed by the uh, immigrants who are coming in. Of course, they're not all criminals, but a lot of them are. And uh, Ann Coulter has told us about a lot of them in her new book, Adios America, which is uh, just shocking to me, uh, the way these criminals have gone after very young girls. And, uh, you know, it's not, not normal men who, who do that sort of thing. Normal men don't go after 10, 11, and 12 year old girls. Two other and, uh, presidential candidates with, with Hispanic backgrounds, uh, Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio, for example, they seem to have very different policies when it comes to illegal immigration. Ted Cruz is very strong. Marco Rubio wants some kind of path to citizenship. What should American immigration policy be in your opinion? We only want to let in people who want to be Americans. Americans have uh, certain things that we believe in. Uh, you can read the oath that uh, you have to take to become a citizen. And uh, I, I think you know, we don't want people who want to come in and bring their own bad ideas with them. We want them to come in and uh, uh, obey the rule of law and uh, learn how to be Americans. I have so many who came in in the immigration wave in the 20s, and they arrived at Ellis Island and they're going to let you liberty and say, now we're in America and we're going to be an American and we're going to speak English and we're going to love this country because this is now our country. And we only want to let people in who are like that. Amen to that. We're gonna take a short break. We're having some technical difficulties, but when we come back, Phyllis Schlafly will weigh in on the Supreme Court rulings. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Are you pro-life? Do you believe that abortion kills innocent children? If so, I want you to take action today and sign a petition at PrayInJesusName.org. Here's three petitions we need you to sign. The number one is to stop Planned Parenthood from getting your taxpayer dollars. Did you know they've received now $487 million in your taxpayer dollars? I don't think that's right. They use that money to facilitate 329,445 abortions, not really to pay for adoption or mammograms, but just to kill innocent children. Sign a petition today at PrayInJesusName.org. Here's number two petition we want you to sign, and that's to defund Obamacare. This bad healthcare law is now forcing Christian employers to pay for contraception, sterilization, and abortion pills free of charge for all their employees, or the Christian employer has to pay a $100 fine per day per employee. That's gonna bankrupt our friends like the Hobby Lobby Corporation, Christian business owners, and even Catholic hospitals now are being forced to pay for abortions. The Obama administration is now promoting the Plan B abortion pill over the counter for children as young as seven years old. Here's petition number three we need you to sign at PrayInJesusName.org to help pass Senate Bill 583, the Life Begins at Conception Act. This personhood bill introduced by my friend, Senator Rand Paul, can actually defend life and help overturn Roe versus Wade. Take action today. I know you care about the unborn, but please sign a petition today at PrayInJesusName.org. 
we will fax that petition free of charge to your congressman. Sign a petition at PrayInJesusName.org. Take action today if you're pro-life. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. I'm joined again by our dear friend, Phyllis Schlafly, eagleforum.org. Welcome back to the program, ma'am. Phyllis, can you hear me? Okay, so before the break, we were talking about a choice, not an echo. I think the premise of your book is, we don't wanna elect a Republican who acts like a Democrat because that would be an echo of the other party. We wanna elect a conservative. So is that what you mean? That's right, and we don't, don't want to fall for this idea of bipartisanship. And we certainly don't want to fall for any idea of a third party. I tell people who are interested in that, move to Europe. They've got plenty of useless third parties over there that you can join. Uh, but <laughs> we are a two-party system, and the fight is in the Republican Party. And uh, that's where you need to put your energy, your effort, your politics, in order that we nominate and elect a good conservative. And uh, that is just uh, so important for the future of our country. Uh, we simply need to, uh, we, we need to get back to our constitutional principles. You know, you were about to ask me about uh, the court decisions. And, and one of the bad ideas that has come into vogue is calling our constitution a living document. Well, it isn't living. It was created by a wonderful bunch of men I think we're godly inspired, and uh, they gave us the what built into the freest and most prosperous nation on the face of the earth. Uh, but at any rate, uh, this idea of a living constitution is so dangerous because that what that really means is the judges can rewrite it to suit their own fancy. And uh, I have a book on this called The Supremacist, is now out of print, but uh, you can go on my website, eaglefarm.org, and uh, take it down chapter by chapter and have a study group to study the, uh, the various uh, decisions on property rights, on feminism, on uh, all the different subjects of, that the courts take up. And I urge you to do that so that we understand uh, that we are not uh, uh, living under some kind of a dictatorship or shouldn't be. You can uh, get that book at eagleforum.org. And when you say the supremacists, are you referring to the Supreme Court justices who try to rewrite law as if it is found in the Constitution? Like in the Obergefell case, which legalized homosexual marriage, for example. Well, that's right. There's nothing in the Constitution about homosexual marriage. And uh, the, the judges made it up, and uh, some people think that because they did, uh, the Supreme Court has spoken. Therefore, we have to uh, accept it. And we don't. We ought to treat it like Abe Lincoln treated the infamous Dred Scott case when he said, okay, we have to accept what the court did to poor old Dred Scott, uh, said he had to be a slave, uh, but we don't have to accept that as the rule of the land because uh, we live in a free country and uh, we uh, know that that decision will someday be overruled and uh, we don't have to obey it just because uh, a few judges said so. So this idea of civil disobedience, we interviewed Governor Mike Huckabee on our TV show who talked about obeying God rather than men. And now we're gonna see an attack on religious freedom. I think Governor Bobby Jindal has been very strong and de demanding religious freedom in wake of the, the gay marriage ruling. Do you think presidential candidates need to come out strong on this? Is that a litmus test for you? Yes, I do, and I think they should. And uh, we, uh, we just don't believe in accepting what some judge says as the new law. That, that's not the kind of country we live in. Remember, the Constitution starts with we the people. And uh, so, uh, what we need to do is uh, n n say, just because the Supreme Court has handed down a decision, we'll reevaluate it and we'll uh, decide whether we want to overturn it or, all, or not. Now, when you were a guest on our show last year, you talked about the military and you talked about drafting young ladies or allowing women in places of combat situation where they may not be prepared. But this week, 
President Obama and his Secretary of Defense, Ash Carter, are talking about transgenders openly serving in the military, men who dress like women. Do you have any opinion about that? Well, I think it's bizarre. And uh, I don't think we ought to cater to all of these nutty ideas. Uh, the Constitution, the way it was written, is uh, very satisfactory. Just stop inventing things that you're trying to put in and pretend that it's a living Constitution that you can add anything you want, uh, anything that some judge wants to say. Well said. Um, so talk for a minute about any other Supreme Court decisions that just came up. For example, Justice Roberts well, ruled that Obamacare is the law of the land. Did that surprise you again? Well, I won't say it surprised me because I don't trust them in the first place. But uh, what they did was to pay no attention to the way a law passed by Congress uh, was written and instead just write it the way they thought they ought to, that they should have written it. Well, that's not what judges are appointed to do. And uh, I do fault the, not only the judges, but the uh, members of the Senate who confirmed some of these people without recognizing that they really didn't, uh, these candidates really didn't have a firm commitment uh, to the United States Constitution the way it was written. It was uh, so long as lasting Constitution in the history of the world, and uh, we need to uh, defend it and protect it because that's what's given us our liberty and uh, our, our way of life. Last question before this break. The next president may be able to appoint up to four Supreme Court justices in their first four years in office. Uh, some of those justices are getting up there in age. How critical is it that we require of a president that he only appoint conservative judges? Well, I don't know that we can uh, have that as a rule, but we need to be more discriminating in interrogating the candidates. And we need to hold, you know, they have a system in the Senate that the senators from the state he comes from have to pass on him before he comes, is brought up for a vote. And I think we ought to go after and criticize the senators from the states uh, of these uh, uh, Supreme Court judges who made the bad ruling on, uh, on marriage because they, there really was nothing in the Constitution of world history to justify what they did. And uh, it's uh, so important that we obey the Constitution the way it was written and not the way the judges would like to rewrite it. I agree with you. We're gonna take another short break and when we come back, a few more words with Phyllis Schlafly. Giving you a megaphone in Washington, D.C. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you ever wonder how to discern your own thoughts from the thoughts that come to you from the Holy Spirit or angels or invisible demons? I'm Dr. Chaps and you've seen us talk about the gift of discerning of spirits. In fact, I wrote my PhD dissertation how to see the Holy Spirit, angels and demons. But now we have an exciting 17 part video Bible study on a four disc DVD set that you can get for your small group or your church. If you just visit PrayInJesusName.org and offer a suggested donation of $99 or call us toll free at 866-ObeyGod, get this 17 part video series and for a limited time only, we'll throw in the book for free. Visit PrayInJesusName.org, get this important Bible study series for you and your church, or call us at 866-ObeyGod right now. He is the intersection of church and state. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back and thank you for watching PIJN News. I'm Dr. Chaps. Join for one last segment with Phyllis Schlafly of eagleforum.com. Phyllis, in the last segment, you mentioned third parties. And I know we have Republicans and Democrats, but you discourage people from voting in the third party. And I, I wanna just suggest maybe Ron Paul agrees with you. He used to be a libertarian, but he ran for president as Republican. Now his son, Rand Paul, is maybe carrying the torch of that movement, but he is also running as a Republican. Uh, any thoughts about the differences between libertarianism and being a conservative Republican? 
Well, they're very fine people. And as a matter of fact, at our upcoming Eagle Forum and National Meeting, we're going to be giving the annual full-time homemaker award uh, to Ron Paul's wife, uh, Carol uh, uh, Paul. And uh, they have a, they're a beautiful family, and I admire them and everything else. But third party is not the way to go, which I think Ron Paul finally realized and stuck with the Republican Party. Uh, but there are so many ways that you can go into politics and make a difference. Uh, when I took on the Equal Rights Amendment, everybody was against me. Nobody thought we could possibly win, but we did. We beat them all. And uh, this is the great opportunity in the United States. I want to say I'm really honored to be on the program with chaps because uh, religious freedom is a big issue today. And, and uh, 10 years ago, I never dreamed that the First Amendment would be under attack of all the things that are wrong with our country. And yet it is. And we need people like you to stand up for the First Amendment and for the real freedom of religion that our country was built on. It's so important. Thank you so much for that endorsement. Uh, another candidate may resemble some of your views about equality. Carly Fiorina has really been taking jabs at Hillary Clinton. Can you contrast those two candidates? Oh, well, Chris, it's the difference between black and white. Uh, <laughs> Carly Fiorina it makes sense when she talks, and uh, she's a, a beautiful and wonderful candidate, and I wish her well. Uh, Hillary Clinton is just uh, the, old, the old style uh, uh, government that is, uh, well, I think cheating is coming and going and trying to impose uh, different views on her, which are not American. Uh, so I hope that uh, we will have a real change, but we won't have a change unless the people listening to this program uh, realize that they have to get involved in politics, in the nitty-gritty of politics, and make sure that the Republican Party nominates a good conservative. Two other candidates have been talking a lot about foreign policy. Uh, Lindsey Graham is burnishing his credentials on, on the Senate Armed Services Committee. Also, Dr. Ben Carson has been standing up for Israel after the deal that Obama made with Iran regarding nuclear energy. What are your thoughts? Uh, well, Ben Carson is a, is a wonderful guy and, and so is the other one. They're all good people. I advise the, uh, the Republicans who will be active in politics question the candidates to see who you like, and then go out and work for them. That's what Kids Country's all about. Well, working for candidates means not just donating to your candidate, but maybe knocking on doors. Do you have a field manual for your activists? How should people get involved? No, but politics is basically a one-on-one -on -one proposition. And the more you talk uh, but to your friends, the more influence you can have. So I urge you to uh, find out who your precinct committeeman is, find out who your county chairman is, and, and get with it. And maybe you could be elected a delegate to the Republican convention, which will be in uh, Cleveland next year. And, uh, and you could have a real impact on our country. I assume you've been a national committeeman in the past. Our friend Morton Blackwell is concerned about the rules. Uh, do you think they're going to be fair this year? Will the delegates be free to vote for the candidates they like, or are they going to be pressured by the establishment to support the party line candidate? Well, there's no question, but the establishment is pushing for the establishment choice. Uh, that, that's a given. And they've been successful in getting their choice for the last several elections, and they've all been a series of losers. So I think uh, the plain people could make a better decision. And I, I urge you to be active in politics so you can play a role in the election uh, and the nomination of the candidate who will be on the ballot. Because uh, no, we're not gonna have a resurrection of Ronald Reagan, that's not going to happen. And uh, we hope that uh, somebody a uh, good and good conservative will be nominated by the party, so will be worthy of voting for on the ballot. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we just have a couple minutes remaining. Phyllis, how can people get involved in Eagle Forum and talk about your convention that's coming up? Well, Eagle Forum uh, is uh, 
been active and very successful in the uh, in the jobs that we've undertaken in politics. And you can go to eagleform.org and sign up and get my monthly letter, a uh, newsletter, which is now I think in its 48th year. About that, I've been writing it for almost forever. And uh, we will have an annual meeting in St. Louis in uh, in uh, October or September, and. Um, I think most of the presidential candidates will come and show their faces and ask you for their vote. So uh, you can evaluate them yourself. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for, but uh, check them out on all the issues and then you'll know. Well, I tried to get you a couple of times to pick and choose which candidates, but you were an iron lady today. You did not tip your hand. I congratulate you <laughs> under a tough, grueling interview here. You did a great job. Thank you so much, Phyllis, for joining us on the program. Uh, your website, and mention your book again. A Choice Not an Echo, and it's available from our website, eaglefarm.org, uh, or Amazon, or all the usual places. Fantastic. Phyllis, I'm gonna close our show with a word of prayer. If you would like to, we, we, I was a chaplain, so we like to pray the news around here. Father in heaven, I pray your blessing on America. As we pick and choose the next generation of leadership, especially at the presidency, and whether it's from the Republican Party, the Democrat Party, uh, Father, whoever your person is in that elected office, I ask that you would open our eyes as voters, open our eyes as activists, as participants, and give us the wisdom, Father, and the blessing and the anointing to discern the Spirit of God in your man or woman for that office, and let us choose them. I ask this blessing on America and on the election process in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Phyllis, thank you so much for coming on the show today. I'm Dr. Chaps. You can visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org or call our prayer line at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. God bless you in Jesus' name. We'll see you next time. Chaplain Klingenschmidt is a graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy who earned his Ph.D. in theology from Regent University. As a former Navy chaplain, by taking a public stand for freedom of speech and religious expression, and by sacrificing his own 16-year career and million-dollar pension, he was vindicated by the U.S. Congress, who changed the law and restored freedom for military chaplains to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps not only defended the Constitution, but his petitions have helped change the law in 10 states, restoring freedom to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. 